Welcome to the Cappuccino Club's social TV channel. An empowered woman is someone who knows her strengths and isn't afraid to embrace it. And so now we invite you to join us as we introduce you to women in leadership in corporates and on boards who inspire and empower others through conversation. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If you're just joining us, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Bridgetti Limbanda. I'm a live video camera confidence coach, and I host and produce live video shows. I'm also passionate about responsible social media advocacy. Today, we're introducing you to women in leadership and corporates and on boards. And my co-host is an accomplished senior executive herself. Her name is Viola Manuel, and she has been nominated for multiple awards herself. Paola, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Paola, can you just briefly, for our audience who doesn't know what the Cappuccino Club is all about, could you just give us a brief um, overview of, of how we got started? Thank you so much, Brigitte. Um, Yes, so Cappuccino Club started about nine years ago, um, and it really started with me just getting some friends together because I, I recognized immediately that I just knew these amazing women um, well-networked woman, eloquent woman um, in business and some of them that were not in business and you know it was just an opportunity for me to get these women together to start meeting each other and talking to each other and so it really started off as a bit of a social platform and then understanding the value that was in that room immediately inspired me to start the cappuccino club and say how is it that we can put this um, this power in this room to more, you know, to good use. And so we started the Cappuccino Club and we ended up um, last year starting a WhatsApp group where we were just all helping each other, job opportunities, nannies, um, you know, um, just opportunities in terms of I need to buy a new car, you know, just really good practical advice that we needed. And that really started taking off. Having one of those little get togethers inspired me when one of the women was saying, you know, if years ago we had somebody just handing out some good advice to us in at the beginning of our careers, we might have made different choices. And I think today's show, um, this whole series of shows has really been about that. It's how do we actually bring this advice to young ladies and even some of us who are more mature, how do we bring that advice to really start influencing and impacting lives positively? And today's show, I just want to first of all thank the, the guests who are part of it because they are amazing women. Um, and, and it was difficult to put the show together. I don't know if you agree with that because it's such a, it's such a broad space. This whole corporate space and board position space is such a, it crosses different industries, it crosses different stages of your career. So, um, you know, we just did our best to bring a few women together who would be in a position to talk about their experience and advice. Absolutely. And we look forward, we're going to welcome Alana Sampson. She's a cabinet attendant with SAA and um, also Professor Shirley Zinn. She is a senior executive on various boards and we welcome her input. Um, also Deirdre Franklin Clemens. She's an oncology product consultant with Novartis. And then Annalene Saunders. She's a senior business analyst with Old Mutual. So we've got a wide variety of expertise in the audience. Shall we invite them to join us? And before I bring them on, I want to say a huge big welcome to our audience on LinkedIn um, and our audience on Facebook. Know that we value your participation. We value that you're watching us live. And uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please post them. We are watching the comments. So let's invite our guests on screen. An empowered woman is someone who knows her strengths and isn't afraid to embrace it. We invite you to join us as we introduce you to women in leadership in corporates and on boards who inspire and empower others through conversation.
Good morning, ladies, and a warm welcome to each one of you. Good morning. Good morning. Professor Zim, I know that your time is very, very um, short this morning because you've got some other commitments, and we really appreciate that uh, you've joined us. So um, if you all don't mind, we'd, we'd like to start asking you one or two questions while we've got you for a few minutes, if that's okay. Thank you. Thanks very much for bearing with me. Awesome. How did you start your career? That is a very interesting question, and thank you. Um, I, you know, didn't think about, uh, you know, the notion of starting a career. Um, we grew up in very difficult um, socioeconomic circumstances, out in the Cape Flats. Mm -hmm. It was very, very tough. And my father was always talking about, you know, please don't get stuck in this place. You know, we know mm -hmm. what those places are all about and the challenges. And he said, please, you know, just try to finish your matric. That's all I'm asking you to do. And then you can go and work and augment the family, you know, from that point of view. My mother was a lot more focused on values and values of respect, humility, hard work, excellence, and kindness, if you like. And the combination of those two things were very important throughout my life. And then, of course, when I finally got to matric, there were two teachers who sat down and said to me in June of 1979, when I was in matric, they said to me, you know what, you're not the brightest pea in the pod here, but you have the potential to do so much more. And this is the message I would like to get out to women particularly who think that, you know, um, they're not able to achieve um, uh, and, 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 you know, really um, reach for their dreams. And I sat down and I, you know, tried to understand what does this actually mean? You have the potential to do so much more. And they said to me, we want you to go home and talk to your parents about university. And so this is, you know, there are lots of stories in between, but the long and the short of it was, if those mm -hmm. teachers didn't have that conversation with me, all of a five minute conversation with me, I would mm -hmm. never ever have gone to university and I would never be sitting here and having this conversation with you today. Mm -hmm. What has been one of your biggest challenges um, in your career, getting to where you are, and what would your advice to others be that want to follow your, your, your path? You know, I think um, what has been very, very important to me is that, I've, you know, um, it is very important to surround yourself with people who can uplift and inspire you. Mm -hmm. And I've always been very fortunate to, first of all, have family and friends, and now mm -hmm. I have a husband um, who, who, who really rally around me in order for me to achieve, you know, um, fully achieve what, or, you know, what, what I can. And so um, even when I was studying, I had, you know, um, professors who got behind me, for example, when I was doing my second master's at Harvard, he said to me, we want you to do the doctoral program. You must apply and you must try and get in. We know you don't have the money, but we'll worry about that once you're in. And if it wasn't for listening to messages that, you know, really challenged me mm -hmm. and took me out of my, you know, normal framework into a whole different realm that said to me, you know, you can actually, you can actually do this. And so for me, that has a whole concept of, you know, um, I can't do, I'm very anxious, I might fail. Those are real worries. And I think many women have that. Imagine what is possible um, if you didn't have those anxieties. Imagine the magic and the talent that could be unleashed um, if you were free just to, you know, evolve and to thrive and to grow. And you have people behind you who can actually make this happen. And so for me, um, you know, this energy um, of, you know, trying to, you know, complete as much academic studies as I possibly could, were drawn mm. from people like this and were drawn from, you know, having a sense of purpose to say, I'm doing all of this. What do I want to, uh, what difference and what value do I want to add to the world? Because I also want to say, you know, we think about careers and we think about, you know, moving up the ladder and we think about mm. earning more money. Um, mm -hmm. But it is also about the value that we bring to our families, mm -hmm. to our communities, and to a, uh, to a society in general. It is really where we can make the difference. And this is the, this is the point I'm trying to make, is we've got to live our lives with meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything that you think could have made your, I mean, you're, you're an accomplished and mm -hmm. respected businesswoman today. Is there anything that you think um, could have made your journey easier? 
Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of patriarchy out there. It's, it's alive and well. Um, we have yeah. seen, you know, uh, an abundance um, and we continue to see of femicide, of, you know, um, violence against women and children, uh, despite all our efforts, you know, this has come to a head um, in, in a very stark uh, manner in the last few months. And I think that, you know, a lot of women are still experiencing the effects of an ideology of patriarchy that still exists in our society and still exists in our workplaces. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about the work that I've been able to do as head of HR in a, you know, in Nedbank, in Standard Bank, in SARS, in Woolworths, um, I've been, you know, at pains to try and say we need to create organizations that are, you know, that are inclusive, that take into account mm -hmm. difficulties that, that, that women have, but women also need to be able to be in an environment where they can thrive, where I can put policies and procedures mm -hmm. in place that will create an enabling environment and opportunities. Um, for women to thrive, where we can say no to bullying of women in the workplace, where we can say no to sexual harassment in the workplace and run campaigns and, and, and you know, ensure that there's consequence where those kinds of things happen. And so for me, those have been, um, you know, some of the big, uh, the big opportunities that I have been able to, you know, um, put into place. Um, and so I want to say, I want to remind everyone, everyone that might be listening to this, is that our values are very important and respect is very important and how we use our time is very important. I've learned through severe tragedy. Um, we lost our, our only son in a, in a terrible car accident in 2003 at a time when my career was absolutely flying. And I want to say to you, if you're suffering um, any adversity, all of us have a story. I want to say to you and I want to encourage you that you know you can work your way through it and if you need to get help you absolutely need to get help you must sign up for that so that you can you can heal and you can move yourself forward prof a huge big thank you for your time um we absolutely absolutely value that you could spare us a few minutes um and we look forward to being able to invite you again at a future time prof, thank, thank you very very much, very much. Thank, thank you, you very thank much you to, to all of you. I would love to have stayed to listen, but I'm going to watch the um, the, the webcasts um, in, in when I get the opportunity. And thanks thanks for bearing with me, all of you, um, and have <laughs> a love have a lovely conversation. Thanks. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you, Prof. Bye bye. Wow. Yeah, mm. that's amazing. She was amazing. Mm. I wanted to find out from you, um, Annaline, maybe you could also just tell us yeah. how did you start your career? I mean, it, it, and I know it's an interesting story, but I think it might be something interesting to tell everybody else. Yeah, that's true. So um, my story is, is similar in the beginning to uh, Professor Shirley, where um, I grew up in a in a community, a community that didn't have a lot of money. My mom um, was raised that when you go to school, you need to then find a job afterwards. And mm. then I passed my trick and then my sister said, no, we can't have the cycle continue. Let's try College of Captain and, and let's have see if... Um, we can get Anlin in there. And Edmund Clerk at the College of Cape Town actually um, spoke to mommy and said, you know what, this girl has amazing marks. She doesn't need to be here. I'm not going to accept her application. Please go and try and um, see if she can get into a, a university. Uh, we there, mommy said, but there's no money. Our family doesn't have any money. Universities are expensive. This, and, the, and this Edmund Clerk said, you know what, all these things will fall into place when you're at the university. As long as you can get there, you can pay your admin fee, everything will fall into place. We then wow. were able to, to get the money. I was I was accepted into university uh, because I did have the marks for it. Um, and then that's where uh, my journey started. Graduating first of the first member of my family to ever complete university um, and to actually start breaking the cycle of finishing matric and working and wow. not um, fulfilling your full potential. Wow, wow. Okay, Deirdre, anything from your side? How did you start <laughs> your career? You were mom of three beautiful girls, um, married. Um, tell us, how did you start your career when you started? Yes, so let me just take you a little bit back to, as to how I got to Cape Town because I'm born in Durban. Also very conservative Indian close family. 
And um, I was accepted to do dentistry. And that's how I actually got to Cape Town. But like all girls that have been from a very sheltered background, got to Cape Town mm. and saw the big lights. And um, yeah, didn't um, didn't have the best of marks to go to complete, to go into second year. So hence me completing my uh, BSc honors at university. And then mm. while I was at university, because I because during my, my university years, I've always worked. I've always been involved in sales, whether it's, you know, in, in at Edgar's or Truett's or even on campus. Yeah. I used to mm. always sell, buy things and sell things just to make extra pocket money because my parents could only really afford for boarding as well as um, my university fees. So I had to make up all the other money. Mm. And um, my biochemistry lecturer, uh, I think it must have been in third year, said, hey, Deirdre, you're such a brilliant saleswoman. You know, when you finish off one day, you must maybe think of looking at going into pharmaceuticals. Um, because I know, with, you know, they, they normally would recruit a lot of people with the science background. Um, I didn't think much of it at that stage and didn't even, you know, at that, didn't even know the industry much. Um, and when I completed my honors, um, uh, fell pregnant, got married and had the need to start working immediately um, because, um, you know, we needed to start making a life for ourselves. And then I looked at that career and, um, yeah, it's been 20 years. So that's how I started, oh, you wow. know, started um, straight, fresh out of university with an honors degree. Um, I joined um, a company at that stage called Aspen, which is now called Aspen Pharmacare. And that's how I've started my career in this industry. Yeah. yeah thank you. So I think the, the, the thing that, that's coming through for me is this whole idea that you do sometimes as a teacher, as a career guidance counselor, as an auntie, as a sister, as somebody um, who's in an influential position, you sometimes just have to to give them that one piece of advice, mm. you know, just that mm. one guiding comment changes people's lives. Mm. And sometimes we, Absolutely. you know, when you mm. see potential in somebody, when you see that they need mm. that little bit of encouragement, actually just verbalizing that encouragement has mm. changed. Mm. All three of you as speakers has radically changed sure. the course of your lives. So I think that's such an important thing. I wanted mm. to just find out from you, um, when did you know that, um, you know, being part of a corporate was the, the space that you wanted to be in? I mean, we've interviewed people from NGOs, giving leadership in NGOs, mm. in small business. Um, and it was a very, a very interesting discussion. We've spoken to people about, um, you know, the ladies who were giving leadership in academia. So my question to mm. you is, you know, this, this space working for such a big brand, how does that space mm. suit you? Is Does it work for you? What are the... What are the things that make it a positive space for you to be in? Uh, Annalyn, yeah. let's start with you. Okay. okay. I think for I, I've actually always just been in corporate. So I actually have no idea what it is to be in a small company or a startup company. But for me, corporates are just, um, you have a lot of room for personally for me to grow and to learn and to experience different things all in a small space of um, time. Like I have about six years, seven years experience. I was able to be an intern. I was able to be just a normal person, I was able to be a manager. And even though it's a corporate company, I was able to advance my career in such a small space, a space of time and learn and grow and see things that I would have never been able to see if I was at a small company. So I really wow. enjoy being at a corporate. Perfect. Yeah. Deirdre? So I've had the blessing or the privilege of being able to have a bit of both. So, um, I, I mean, as you know, Viola, my husband's a businessman and mm -hmm. I've got three girls. So I've been blessed with the opportunity of being able to take a break from corporate um, mm. when my family needed me more and and be involved in the business and hence be doing that mm. business degree after getting the science background. So, I mean, I think initially, you know, I wanted to always be in the medical field. I looked at, at medicine mm. and dentistry and all of that. Um, and I think stepping into um, the pharmaceutical industry, it allows me to exercise both my, you know, my mm. science background or my strengths in science together with my business mind, um, you know, with, with, with doing the business degree. And in pharmaceuticals, it's, it's about science plus 
business. And yeah. um, I think what I love most about being in the corporate environment or working for a company such as Novartis is that we have such a robust pipeline of new drugs. And if there's any way that I could add value other than being a doctor, is basically going and sharing this new information about our new products or, or the new products that we're launching. And that way, adding value, um, you know, to, to, to the community or, um, yeah, to the community at large. So I okay. love what I'm doing. You know, I love what I'm okay. doing. Did they, did, how does it, how does the two spaces differ? Because you, you know, you've been part of a corporate and then mm. you moved on to sort of being in small business and now you're back yes. in corporate. And, and, you know, one of the things that I always feel is that corporate, corporate has, has this discipline and structure mm. that small mm. business maybe doesn't have. How do you feel mm. about that? What is, what has your experience been? So I think corporate gives you a little bit more stability, especially, you know, in the current socioeconomic environment that we're in, you know, the businesses, you know, it, it, it's one month you're doing well and the next month, but, you know, there's, there's, there's no um, what kind of stability. You know, mm. in, in, in the profit margins that you're making, you could have a great season and then you can have a yeah. terrible season. And mm. uh, we've been in the hospitality industry, which is very, very, you know, which fluctuates all the time. Mm. Whereas mm. in corporate, you know, it gives you stability. You do what you have to do, you know, at the end of the day, X amount, you know, you're earning. And mm. I think uh, for me, that's the major difference between corporate mm. and um and having your own business, you know, corporate also all, all the other benefits that you get with corporate, you know, your mm. pension fund, your medical mm. aid, um, and all of that. So, so there are major mm. benefits um, in being corp in corporate, um, you know, um, rather than being in small business. Um, or, or, or that's been my experience. Yeah. So, mm. so I know that it's 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 such a different experience for everybody. Um, but what does a so you've joined this corporate. What does a typical day look like for you all? What is a typical um, day like? What is a typical day like for you, Deirdre? What you know, you wake up, you put on makeup, you do yeah, your hair. So, yeah. So, so I'm in a very you know, with, with the type of position that I have, it's, it's very flexible. I can basically mm -hmm. I work around my appointments. Um, so if I have a very early morning training to do at some hospital, then it's get up in the morning, have your cup of coffee, and run out. Um, mm -hmm. But 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 you know, if if I have a later morning appointment uh, like I've had like I have today, which is in the afternoon, yeah. then I would get up and my typical day would be uh, sort my daughter out, get her to school by seven thirty, and yeah. then get to gym I try my best at least two or three <laughs> times to get to gym and then come home shower and do admin okay. there's lots of admin there's lots of background work than just sitting in the face of a doctor and talking yep. about your product mm. Um, mm. so there's planning admin booking my flights because mm. I look after huge um, uh, territory now um, and yes and then I try um, I work to be able to get home by four o'clock for the latest. Um, mm -hmm. I always plan all my appointments around there so I can have good time, quality time with my daughter, you know, when I fetch her from school. Mm -hmm. And then it's the normal, you know, cooking, you become back, you know, you go back to being mom and wife and making sure your yeah. family sorted out from about that time. So, yeah. so I think I'm very blessed, you know, I, I don't have a structured day. I don't mm -hmm. have to be in mm -hmm. office. I work from home and um, I'm on the road. So, so I plan my day around that. Yeah. And Aline, what's a typical day like for you? Um, so I'm really early in the morning because I like to be at work early and I hate traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so I started at about half past six um, and for the first two hours it's mostly just admin and checking my emails, rescheduling meetings. Um, yeah. My week is filled with meetings and workshops. So it's preparing for that, doing some research. And then my day starts with um, team meetings and then actually running meetings, running workshops, mm -hmm. um, doing customer journeys, um, very interactive, also very flexible. So even though I have a lot of meetings and, and workshops, which is part of my main focus, it's, it's something different every day. So once I complete a piece of work and it goes live, it's on to the, it's on to the next thing. Yeah. And I'm able to do multiple things all, all at the same time because um, they have different projects, small of, of small and big size. So it's mainly just talking to people, um, trying to understand what it is that what they want to deliver, seeing if it's the right thing, doing research, um, going to branches, finding out um, uh, how the actual financial consultants work, is is yeah. or is what they're doing conducive? Does it help the customer in any way? Uh, and then taking that information back and seeing how we can change it and make it better. 
both for the um, financial services at branch and also for the customers who come in. Okay, so so um, I think from us, you know, our perspective, um, like even trying to put the show to together today, it was difficult because you know everybody has all these meetings in their diaries yeah. that um, yeah. you can't move and and you have to yeah. make sure that you you know that you you able to book time in people's diaries and and like a lot of the ladies said, you know, great initiative, we would love to participate, but it's just you know my boss has spoken and my boss has said mm. that I need to do this and you know I need to get this done and my boss is here this week and so on. How do you guys feel about the comments that, you know, working in corporate, you're always sort of beholden to a boss and the bosses, um, you know, sort of call the shots compared to somebody who's in small business where they sort of their own boss um, and they can sort of design their day. Uh, you know, how do you feel about that? Do you, is it, is it, is it a problem? Are there days when you feel like you wish you didn't have a boss? Annalyn? Uh I feel like I am very lucky and very blessed in the fact that both um, when I was in the retail sector and in the financial services industry, yeah. I feel like the IT industry is changing and it's changing to not a, uh, a be in that regard where bosses are looking at you and watching you and making sure you do what you are supposed to do. They're yeah. actually allowing you to, uh, as long as you are delivering the, the desired output, whatever gets done during the day, you are self-managed. That's actually yes. what I'm looking for. Right. You are uh, self-managed and it's flexible. So um, as long as I'm able to, to deliver, um, they are okay with whatever I do during the day and how I, I'm able to deliver what, what, what needs to be done. So it's okay. very flexible. Right. If I need to, to run and do something something quickly, no one's going to have a problem. So I haven't had that corporate um, boss that's behind my back and says, you must be here at lunch at one o'clock or you can't yeah. go and have lunch. Or you must yeah, leave um, it off for three. Yeah. Or uh, I haven't had that issue, so I was very, I'm very blessed. Awesome. Um, I want to just my own mini time. boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With that personality, sister, I know. Um, <laughs> I just want to to welcome Alana Sampson. Alana, um, Alana is a cabin attendant um, with South African Airways, and obviously in a completely different space. So I'm going to ask Alana, I just want to catch, um, you know, get some get some thoughts from you. I know that you probably just need to have a breather. But for you, um, Alana, you've always worked in the airline industry. Um, what has been exciting for you about being part of such a big corporate and how, how does it affect who you are um, compared to if you had worked for a small business, for example? Okay. First of all, ladies, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I apologize. I'm a bit challenged when it comes to technology, but I'm working on it and I'm here. <laughs> Accomplished. Um, okay, aviation industry. That's been my life. Um, not planned, though. It happened by, one can say by accident. Um, I then jumped at the opportunity. Um, airline. Oh, my goodness. It is really unpredictable. Um, in the interview, I remember they they told me your life will become ours, and it's the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's there's no routine. Um, you could be flying to New York tonight, and then they could call and tell you flight cancel, but we need you for Hong Kong tomorrow. So there's nothing that is routine, and that you can say, okay, this is going to happen today. It's the deafness. So anything can happen in a change of minutes, hours. It's exciting. So you've got to have things like you've got to be a very organized person. Actually, the airline taught me that. Uh, you've got to be good with your time management. Um, be uh, very open-minded because of all the cultures and the different uh, um, industries and people that you're going to be meeting, whether it's colleagues or passengers. So, yeah, it's never a dull moment. Okay. So, so, um, in terms of this whole this whole discussion today, I think one of my biggest challenges was the fact that the industries are so vast. I mean, you're talking about the airline industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the financial services industry. And so you ladies are representing your industries to us today. But I think one of the things that for me, um, I'm trying to to um, get you know get across in this discussion today is that there's such huge opportunity. Um, within all these industries and the opportunity to be part of a bigger brand family. 
Um, mm. Do you ever feel that you sometimes get lost in this big family? Do you feel that you sometimes are just um, a number? Because that's the other thing that people mm. say when they exit mm. corporate. You know, I, I was just a number there. I didn't, you know, nobody appreciated my worth, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Deirdre, do you mm. feel that sometimes, um, you know, has there ever been that experience that you're just this number in this big corporate and they make decisions that affect your life without consulting, et cetera, et cetera? No, no, not, not at all. Um, if anything, Novartis is, I think, the number one company to ever work for. Um, we, uh, in oncology, we have a very small team. So everyone's part of the team. I mean, there's a, there, there's a huge trend at Novartis, which, which the global CEO has actually put out called hashtag unboss. So no one really is anyone's boss or manager. Everyone's given the uh, authority to do their jobs to the best of the ability. Um, and never, ever once have I, in my experience of being with this company, ever felt a number, uh, you know, just as a number. So I think, um, you know, I haven't struggled with that at Novartis. Novartis takes care of their staff and and we don't have very big teams, you know, in we have small, small teams. So our team, oncology team now is about 10 or 12. Um, and, and that's from the director to the finance person to just about everybody in that team. So very small teams, very connected, um, always chatting, always, you know, um, getting ideas from each other. Um, so, yeah, I haven't had that. I don't feel that. Okay. I haven't felt that at Novartis. Okay. And, and uh, Annalyn, Woolworths, Old Mutual, those big, big um, bands? I think from a personal and from a people perspective, never. I feel like everybody's inclusive, everybody's friendly. But what I, what I will say is from a decision-making point of view, sometimes you feel like you're just a number because it takes time for you to build cred credibility. It takes time for you to build trust, especially coming in as a young person into the, into the organization. And even though you're right, and even though you... the or what you're saying, what you're trying, to, trying to, to bring across is the best thing, not just only for the organization, but for the customer, which is um, uh, in, in, in my field that I look at, it's not always heard because um, one, you can either be you're a female, because in the IT industry, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a male-led industry, or that you don't have the power to make that decision that decision so sometimes in that regard i feel like um you're just a number or you need to build a lot more credibility and power in order to make those key decisions but from yeah. a person or a people perspective no okay so that's really felt included i think that's just part of a corporate right that you do yeah. have yeah. yeah who sit at the top yeah. they get paid a lot more uh, they have to be accountable yeah. for those decisions yeah. that they take yeah. Um, Alana, from your side, how do you feel? I mean, your your situation is really, really unique in that you are part of this big SAA family, but you you sometimes far away in Hong Kong for, for ten days. You know. Um, I'm sitting thinking. You know what, um, ladies? Sometimes um, one must um, looking back now, much older, yeah. but wiser. Um, I think you can actually get lost in the numbers. So, uh, and I think it's important uh, to actually to have, because you're replaceable, you see, being part of a big company is a long queue of unemployed people waiting to fill your, to fill your, your space. And, I, and, and it's true, you can get lost in the number or the, the, the pension number situation mm. that we are in. So, and I think it's important to actually plan. Plan for your, 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 have a strategy, have a plan, you know, have a short term, long term plan. Mm -hmm. Where do I want to be? Speak to the relevant people. Like, mm -hmm. yes, you can get some advice from your colleagues, but it's, speak to relevant people like in HR. Mm -hmm. If I maybe want to, to grow as a person in the company, like at, at SA, mm -hmm. there are many opportunities, but you need to know what you want to mm -hmm. do and where you're going to go. Because else you can get lost as a number. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're so big. And you have to actually Correct. be responsible and you have to, to actually um, say, you know what, um, I've got a year break now, but next year I want to study further. Let me do my mm. homework. Let me see if mm. I can go and get the proper information because you can get lost in a big yeah. corporate. Yeah, yeah I, th yeah, I think lot. you can. I think you can. L let me ask something. You know, so, so everybody's, 
aiming for this promotion thing. And in corporates, a promotion can take you into so many different mm-hmm. directions. Um, mm-hmm. In your instance, Deirdre, what would a promotion mean to you? Is it something that you're looking for? Or are you, know, are you happy to just sort of stay where you are because it suits you? Um, what would a promotion mean to you, Deirdre? Besides yeah, your money. For, <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for now, for the next three years, I've got a daughter who's just, you know, got three years to finish a matric. So at Novartis, all of the de- development, you know, if I have to go, I'm at the highest where I can be now, you know, being based from home and working from home. Um, so for the next three years, I'm not looking for any, you know, any more of a senior position. Um, definitely more money, yes. And, 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 and the thing is, you know, apart from my, my job, we, we incentivized as well in addition to, you know, our, our salary packages. So I can stay right here and, 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 and determine what my, what my commission or what my salary is going to be every month. Um, and because of Kiara, because of my baby still being in school for the next three years, I'm, I'm staying put. But thereafter, and I've made this very clear, uh, you know, I'd be more open and flexible to moving around because I want to be globally relevant. At a Novartis, mm-hmm. you have to go and spend some time up at head office for a year or two before you can actually start spreading your wings globally but the the opportunities are there for me i know and yeah so in the next three years i'm i'm gonna try and work my way where i could just become more globally relevant should i want to ever you know have experiences in other countries okay and i mean what does promotion mean for you um, so actually, I was actually thinking about this, um, and it's something that I'm actually struggling with, not with regards to I think I've worked so I've worked hard enough so that I I said I want to become a senior business analyst, and I, and, I, and I became a senior business analyst. I was able to manage a team, and I so I've done all the stuff that I've set out to do in a short space of time that I haven't had the opportunity to think about what am I going to do post that. Mm. So that's something that I'm actually. I'm taking time out to actually think about and say, what is next for me? Is it okay. a career change? Is it something different? I'm not sure. It's just something that I'm constantly thinking about, and hopefully I'll come to a decision soon. Okay. Alana, what, is, what does a promotion mean for you in, in the airline? Um, as you say, we have different levels, like your cabin crew member, mm-hmm. then you have your, your person position, and then you also have your senior person position, which is the obvious, the latter being the most senior one. Um, I can, um, I'm a cabin crew member, I can also act in the person position. So mm-hmm. with the airline, it's completely different, you know. Uh, so you have to choose what do you want to do, because it's such a, it's such a lifestyle. So mm-hmm. do I want to be a or then I can choose yeah. to do what a domestic um, uh, uh, roster. So I choose to do just domestics, not fly away, stay at home. Or I can decide to do, uh, let me, I want to travel more international and then I can either choose, still be a cabin crew member, but maybe not fly uh, too often, then I can do PERSA. So it also depends on, at the end of the day, it comes both down to money, you know, if you fly international, yeah. you're going to be um, in, in the cabin seat. So you've got, to, you've got to plan where you want to be. Um, at the moment, um, I'm definitely busy preparing myself um, mentally uh, for, uh, <laughs> for a promotion. And also I just know about two years ago. So, you know, so all that comes into play and you've got to, you've got to uh, um, change your, your, your lifestyle That's, that makes you comfortable. You've got to make decisions. Mm-hmm. You know, that yeah. make you comfortable and now being married, um, Habi would like to see me a bit more often. So, so yeah, I've got to do what works for me. Uh, okay. Promotion is definitely something okay. I'm thinking about. I'm excited. I think it's good for it's good for your morale. It's good for what you learn, you grow. So um, yeah, that's the next step. I'm excited. Okay, let me let me ask this uh, just off the back crazy question. How do you ladies find um, without divulging too much of your personal lives on uh, LinkedIn and Facebook and with the rest of our audience. But how do you ladies find that men um, generally react to women who are in leadership and strong women with strong, good jobs? How do you, how do guys respond to you? You know, I'm not talking about husbands and boyfriends and stuff. I'm just talking about just generally. How do guys mm. respond to you? Are they, are they, you know, do they admire you for what you've been able to achieve? Do they want to talk to you about your job or are they expecting you to still pour tea? No. 
<laughs> okay, not in New York. Well, thanks a lot. You're supposed to pour tea. But I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out how do, how do men respond to strong women in great positions in their, you know, in their careers, um, aspiring to do great things? How do, they, how do you find them responding to you? Uh, let's start with you, Emily. Uh, have... Okay. Okay. I think in with me, I feel like men don't generally converse, uh, converse with you when they hear that you're uh, in a senior position or a leadership position because if they're not in, in that position, how are they going to brag about it? So then they normally, <laughs> just change, <laughs> they normally just change the topic or speak, speak, speak about something. Okay, I think Annalene just froze on us. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, with regards to the position that that you have, so that's my experience. Okay, Deirdre, your experience? Yeah. Uh, you know, I it's it, I think the environment I'm in, it's it's men who respect um, uh, successful women, because um, I'm dealing with at work. I mean, it's 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 men that are all educated, um, you know, and they understand how hard a woman had to work to get to where she has to be. And they appreciate and respect that. And then with customers, I mean, I'm dealing with just specialists, um, you know, on, on a daily base, uh, oncologists and hematologists. And I haven't, uh, you know, the, the, they, they all come across, if you know, the, the men come across as being very respectful and um, to me. So I haven't actually been, you know, um, where men look down, at a, a strong woman. If anything, they admire a strong woman. Brilliant. Alana, from your side? Yeah, um, I think it also depends the company. You know, if you, mm -hmm. you find yourself in a company where uh, you'll find men who think, oh, flight attendants, you know, air mm -hmm. and, um And then they would tea them, maybe say, oh, tea up um, coffee or tea or chicken or beef. Yes, true. But I'm the same lady that will be able to save a life, CPR, yes. or mommy that's be delivering a baby. I'll be able to to do because we are trained in an aviation medicine. Mm -hmm. And then you get the company there that um, men are interested. They want to know more about aviation, you know. And then uh, yeah, respect comes in. So so yeah, um, that's about it. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, just any words of advice to the young lady watching the show who's decided, look, I don't have the stomach for entrepreneurship. Um, I'm not um, really keen to go to the NPO, NGO sector. Mm -hmm. Academia and research bores me. You know, I want to go and work mm -hmm. for a big brand and I want to work for corporate. What would your words of advice be to that young lady? Alana, we'll start with you. Okay, I will definitely. What helped me a lot in the in the twenty one years, uh, and that that's only a saying. A um, lot of prayer. Um, mm. Mm. Uh, plan your life. Uh, very important. Have a short term plan. Have a long term plan. Uh, don't be afraid of the word budget. Look at your budget. Mm. <laughs> uh, be honest with yourself. If you need to change a few things, change. Ask advice. Relevant people. Um, find out about your companies, that keep a finger on the pulse, mm. know your company, what's happening. Um, like I say, if you can study further, find out about that. Um, be positive. If you're not happy in a, a, a department or in, a, in an environment, mm. uh, speak to the relevant people. Um, you're responsible for your own happiness. Um, mm. Stay. Oh, we lost her. Oh, oh shut yeah. Deirdre, um, what what would yeah. you sort of? Yeah, so I so I believe you know if you're not growing, you're dying. So mm -hmm. never give up. That that's going to be my one advice to to a lot of girls out there. Always empower yourself. Do whatever it takes to empower yourself. I got my MBA at the age of forty with three little kids. And I had lots of people in corporate when I decided that I wanted to go back and do my MBA because I, I left campus when, um, you know, when I did my honors and had Saskia, my eldest daughter who's now 23. Um, a lot of people said, you're never going to do it. There's, it's hectic. You're not going to, you, your marriage is going to suffer. It's called the divorce degree and all of those things. Um, and, 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 you know, thank heavens and thank 
God, I have brilliant parents that um, supported me and pushed me along as well as a good husband that I did do it. I mean, there were times where I thought, no, maybe, maybe it's not something I want to register for. Maybe it's something I don't want to do, but I, you can do it. Uh, you know, um, and if you're young and you're single, it's the best time to do it because, I mean, I was able to accomplish my academ academia at, at 40 with three little kids of 10, six and two. So I think anything's possible. And um, yes, I mean, whether you aspire to own your own business or whether you aspire to go into a large, large corporate, you need to make yourself relevant. You need to have as much expertise as you can. You need to be have whatever uh, prerequisites they require and more and just not be average so so never settle on I'm okay where I am just keep 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 pushing yourself keep growing keep empowering yourself and yeah and and and, and make, make, make yourself marketable I would say mm -hmm. great and that's my advice never give up thanks thanks dear Jay. Uh, for me is always pray for a great manager when starting a new job uh, oh, yes. and all <laughs> Uh, and also, um, what the one thing that I've learned is that you also have to, people are, lo are looking for jobs out there and want to be yeah. in corporates or have careers, but they, sometimes their personality uh, is not a fit for the culture they, they, they're entering in. So the one of the things that I, all, that, I, that I look at now is look at the environment, look at their, their culture, see if it's conducive to your personality and to how you would like to work. Because you spend majority of your time at work, not actually, actually at home. So you don't want to be at, at work and then actually be unhappy. Um, mm -hmm. And also not to limit yourself. I mean, if you look at my example, I had the potential to go to university. I had the potential to do all, all of these things, but because I limited myself because of financial constraints or whatever other constraints, um, I then didn't um, set out to do it. So I would always say, don't limit yourself. All of those other things, there are solutions for them. Once you're in it, you're able to then navigate and see what the options are. Um, so don't limit yourself. That's fantastic. I think what we've what we've been able to discuss today has been so important. It's just been such a, I think, um, interesting discussion. And I, I know that there's a lot of people who are going to watch the show and either going to, you know, um, have similar experiences to the ladies that we, you, to you guys that we've been speaking to. And I know that there's a lot of people who probably are going to be able to add to this discussion through their comments when they watch it. And so I just want to encourage the ladies who are watching the show, please, you know, feel free to add comments. I want to thank all of you very much for participating today. Um, I know Brigitte wants to, to wrap up. We've um, taken the time that we said we would take. Thank you for participating. I know it's always unnerving to go into new um, experiences like this, but thank you for participating and making the time. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thanks. From my side also, a huge big thank you to each one of you. Um, also another huge big thank you to Prof Zim who was able to join us for um, for the beginning of the show. We value her time. We value your time, ladies. And thank you for the amazing gems that you have shared. And we look forward to getting more comments and input from others um, who have watched the show. If you've watched us live, type hashtag live. And if you're watching us on the replay, tap, uh, type in hashtag replay. And also where you're watching from, it's always great to know. So thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to do good stuff. Let's lift as we rise and inspire each other one conversation at a time. We'll see you back same time next week. Bye Thank for you. now. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.